out of all the players I love, Carlos Santana is different. There's something about him that is just, I, I just can't explain it. Now what's really weird is that if you would have told me back in the late 90s when I started picking guitar that I would be a Carlos Santana fan, I would have thought you're, you're kind of nuts because at the time I was a very different person. I, I didn't understand Santana's music. To me, it was, you know, kind of blues, kind of sloppy. I didn't really like the tone. I didn't really like the music that much. I just didn't get it. So when I started playing guitar, a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it was for the wrong reasons. I wanted to be cool. I was more interested in the flashy, showy aspect of playing. My favorite players were all the 80s speed players. And you know, that's, that's kind of where I came from. So in that regards, when I listened to music, it was with a different filter. I, I didn't listen to the music that, the way that I listen to today. When I listened to the bands I loved, you know, Guns N' Roses, Iron Maiden, Aerosmith, my ear was really drawn to the lead guitar player and I would pay attention to things like melody, speed, tone. I mean, those are good things, but I was kind of missing something. Now, something started to change in the way that I listened to music somewhere around 1999. I was with my uncle Bruce and Bruce kind of introduced me to all those bands that I that I love. He introduced me to uh, Ted Nugent, Cat Scratch Fever, that riff. Love that thing. He introduced me to Leonard Skinner, Van Halen that I got to see with my uncle. That was really cool. But one day, we were driving in his car and Bruce put on this record and it was Santana record that had just come out. It was Supernatural. And that's kind of what we did in the car. We would drive around and there was always some music really loud. And that's how we listened to that album that day. And I liked it a lot. There was something about listening to Santana at high volume that triggered something in me. Uh, an appreciation for something that, again, I couldn't really put my finger on, but there was something in the way that Carlos was playing that really came through at high volume in that car with my Uncle Bruce. It's something that made the guitar sing, for lack of better words. And so I automatically engaged my analytical mind, the, the mind of a guitar player who wants to understand what is this guy doing that I like so much and how can I use it? So I went through all the, all the filters that I had. Was it the melody? Not really, it was pretty simple. Was it the technique? Again, not really. It, it was, I mean, it was not super impressive technically. Was it the tone? Well, not really, because at the time, you know, for me, good tone was a lot of distortion, a lot of delay, a lot of reverb. So I wasn't really attracted to that tone, but it was something else. And the one thing I noticed is that when I was listening to Santana played at high volume in the car, I could picture mentally what Santana was doing. I could see him play those notes. I could visualize him without visualizing him, if that makes any sense. And then it just clicked. I realized that the reason I was able to visualize in my mind Carlos playing, the attack of the note, the sweat drops falling out of Santana in the studio. I was just really envisioning how he was playing and that translated through what I was hearing. And the reason was because of the intent that Carlos had when he was playing. It's as if every single note that Carlos was playing was meaningful to him. And in return, it became meaningful to me. Now, I wanted that. I wanted to do that in my playing. So I went back home that night and started working on it. But I knew that I couldn't work on this in the same way that I would work on other pieces of music that I like. You know, typically if I heard something that I wanted to play on the guitar, I would try to figure out what was being played, which frets, which techniques was used, what the rhythm was, maybe try to match the tone. 
But this was different because there was none of those things that I wanted to achieve. It was the intent and the purpose. So it is all a mindset type of thing. So here's what I did. I took a deep breath. I grabbed my guitar, I plugged in, and I didn't do anything. I just really tried to get into that zone. I imagined what it would feel like to play the first note that I was going to play. I tried to attach a meaning to that note. I also tried to imagine what the string would feel like on my left fingers. How much pressure was I going to put on that string? How was I going to attack that string with my pick? All those thoughts helped me feel the, the note before playing the note and, and hear it as well. It just helped me connect with the purpose of playing something. And then I played the note. And the feeling I got on playing the note, and I'm talking about physical feeling, matched what I imagined it would feel like. And that was my entry into practicing something different. Practicing the intent behind every note you play. And then I moved on to imagining really short licks, short ideas. I tried to put a meaning behind it. And I didn't play it. It was all a mental exercise through breathing. And then once I felt ready, I would play that. The cool thing is that not only did it feel different when I played it, I felt more connected, but to me it sounded different. But I needed to be sure. So I grabbed my multi-track recorder. At the time I had, it was a uh, mini discs. I don't know if you guys remember those, but I had a four track mini disc recording my album, <laughs> right? I had a few ideas. And I had this uh, song that I had just recorded the solo for. It was a very simple blues type of thing. And I decided to re-record the lead part of that solo with that intent behind every note. So the first thing I did was just listen to the simple backing track I had. And I listened and I imagined what it would feel like to play these notes. I tried to, for lack of better words, become one with the music. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it, but it really helped me feel that connection. And then I grabbed my guitar and I hit the record button and I went for it. And when I listened to what I had recorded, I was pretty shocked because it sounded very different. It sounded alive. The difference in what I was hearing was not in the choice of notes. It wasn't in the technique or, or even the tone because I was using the same exact tone. But really it's hard to describe, but the music sounded alive. It sounded fresh and it sounded more expressive with most likely if you were to analyze that it's like micro things that are really hard to quantize maybe the placement of the note was a little bit before or after the beat the intensity but it sounded in the spirit of what i had heard with my uncle bruce in that car what, what i was hearing from carlos santana playing i felt really excited to have kind of cracked the the code the secret that I was hearing from Santana and I decided to revisit uh, or discover, I should say, some older Santana tracks and, and I heard it. And every single thing Santana plays, I hear that intent. Even way back on the, the Woodstock recordings, I heard it. Even if you don't look at the actual footage, you can kind of picture it when you're listening to it. There is this intensity and this purpose behind every note. Now, the beauty of this is that the concept of having purpose behind every note you play is not limited to Carlos's style of playing. It could be applied to anything, and, and that's good news because I don't play in the same style as Carlos. But I was able to apply this into everything I do. So whenever I have to record something, I remember that time and the the late 90s when I when I discovered that intensity behind Carlos's music and I I just take a moment to breathe imagine what it would feel like to record something or play something and then when I'm ready I just play it it's an experience that's locked into time when I'm recording something and I try to capture uh, that moment feel something so that 
it translates into what you're hearing. And I actually discovered other things that are beyond the intent behind every note. There's actually a lot of really interesting ideas that Santana is doing that can be applied in any types of music. And I actually recorded a video with a lot of those discoveries right here. Let's listen to Carlos's music together and you'll see what we can discover. I'll meet you right there. <laughs> 